lost, they won. Period. That's how it works. You know, so uh, you have to you have to put the tracks in place. In season one, when I launched in 2019, I controlled A to Z of the operation. That's how we became successful in the empire and the real estate world because you don't delegate that to someone else. We do it. When you do it, you know the ins and outs. And uh, and n once I nailed every step of the way in terms of what needs to happen. We were in the Hollywood Reporter, we were in Variety, we had uh, major, major uh, players in the season one. I had Bruno involved with his assistance and his help. You know, we awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award to John Singleton, uh, who had passed away in recognition of the work that he's done and his daughter, uh, Justice Singleton, on his behalf, accepted the award. So you, you want to do, you want to give back. I think what made my position more, I think what made it shine even more in the industry is I did not come into the industry and say, hey, what do you got for me? I came in to say, what can I do for you? And I think that that means a lot. I want to echo to what you said about John Singleton. That's one of my favorite subjects since I, I brought his film to Cannes. And, uh, and and if we had time, I would tell you the whole story. Basically, the, the guy was uh, 19 something at UCLA. His teacher was my boss, uh, the head of Sony. And he went to him and said, I've got an idea for a movie. And, uh, and uh, Peter Gruber heard about it and said, mm, yeah, why not talk to Stephanie Allen, who was in charge of the so-called ethnic uh, studio uh, projects. And basically, short story, uh, the film got made and uh, one year after he touched on the shoulder of uh, Peter Gruber, the film was in Cannes. <laughs> so uh, in, in, in February, I put a phone call to, to Cannes Festival, said, we have a film we'd like to show you. And two weeks after, very big surprise, we're in. Well, that's how we start. That's when we started working, like February till May, four months or so, uh, knowing that we did not know a thing about how to market such a movie, which was uh, very new. And, and so we decided we would pick one. I'm telling you the story because it's a multi million dollar story, and it's about how you can succeed with film festivals. Um, <clears throat> so we, we picked this journalist who we knew was an expert on, on black cinema. A guy, forgot anyway, who cares about his name, but he was part of a very famous uh, magazine in France. He came to see the movie, first one in the world to see the film outside of the studio. And when he came out, he was there, and I saw him red-eyed, and he was moved and said, oh my God, that this is awesome world. And he was crying. It was, he said, it's the first type of film in that, what we call the black cinema. I've never seen anything similar to that film. It's, so we realized how and, and, and why we needed to put a lot of special work on, on the movie. That's another and long story. The film comes to Cannes and it's a major success. Everyone, we managed to bring everyone in the community to watch the film. We managed to, well, create some, uh, appeal, desire, want to see, and we turned out, we left more than 500 people on the street who could not get in the 2,000 seater. And that's the best publicity you can have. So the next day in variety, by demand, second screening, Boys in the Hood. And we did a party, we flew, we flew Ice Cube and his uh, scratchers and, uh, and uh, he came, he, I don't know how he did it, he, he flew from South Central LA to Nice, Cannes, with a gun in his pocket. <laughs> Tell me how? I don't know. How, how did you do it? And I also had to go with the scratchers and basically uh, buy every record in the shop, record shops in Cannes so they would have the right material for their show. And anyway, long, long story short, um, lots of, it, of course, yeah, posters. We had uh, uh, graffiti artists design live the posters on the croisette. That got us 20 minutes on Canal Plus, which is the, big, the biggest race, uh, 
a TV show in France and mostly the most uh, biggest financier in, in, in film. Anyway, at the end of the festival, everything was so amazing that the head of Frank Price, who run the studio, told me on, on, before going into his plane, Bruno, thanks everyone and your team. You did an amazing job. What happened for the movie is exceptional. I'm going to change, first thing I do back in the office in LA, I'm going to change the box of his estimate. Basically his prediction that the movie would do 30 million, he changed it and said, because of everything that Cannes did, the power of Cannes, the power of the film festival, I'm going to put 50. He was wrong, he did 57. And you can multiply by more than two for the rest of the world. Basically, I'm very proud to be able to say, first time in my career, I saw someone who, gave, who put a figure on what a festival could do. And I'm a marketing person. I believe that's my, for me, that's God. I believe in marketing, and, and if you do it right, they will come. If you build it correctly, if you put your guts, etc., etc. So now I could say yes, and it brought 50 million to the studio. If you and uh, how can you? So the other very nice thing, and we shared with 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 John, when uh, when 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 uh, John Singleton passed. Uh, the festival, Cannes Festival, decided to pay an homage to, to his career and, and show the film on the, on the beach to everyone for free. And somehow... 30 years later. Yeah, 30 years later, exactly. And, and somehow his daughter, Justice, who came to his reception and received the award for... Ju Justice Singleton, his daughter, um, sent me an email, hey Bruno, I, I, I read, I saw, I heard about what you did for my dad, I hear something is happening in Cannes, so that's the power of the net, internet, filmfestivals.com, somehow she found out. If you need to know something, you'll find it, that's the beauty of this media. So she said, yeah, interesting, they're doing something, I'll, I'll come. So I negotiated and the festival agreed to do special things, and here we are, tuxedo with uh, uh, justice at the bottom of the red carpet and surprise for her I had put the music, the soundtrack of, uh, of yeah. the film which is so amazing, powerful and moving yeah. and, and after that she told me, oh god, when you put when I heard that music I did not know whether I was about to cry uh, that, would be not that would have looked so bad on the pictures I said, no, no, I'm a big girl I'm and she went alone. I mean, that must be very tough yeah. for her, like two weeks after yeah. her past died. She, she was alone, we let her alone on the red carpet, look left to the pictures, to the camera, right to the other one, then the, the photographers, etc. And then we went as a group, and then the surprise of the festival director, uh, we met him on the top, he said, we had the cocktail party after that, and, and that's when uh, Leonardo DiCaprio came and joined the party. And then we had the, an amazing reception at his <laughs> place, which was, I've uh, never seen anything like that in Cannes. I mean, <laughs> like 200 meter square meter terrace were overlooking the, v the sea, amazing. So how can I describe But she, uh, she had the occasions to put her feet in the footsteps of her dad. And she said, so that's my second best time in my career, the first time was like the figure, the second was the recognition of, yeah, you put your guts, you made it, and thank you. So that was said, she said, she said, uh, Bruno, I want you to know that you made my day, the, ma the way you made, you made my dad's, and for me it's... Wow, that was, that was special. <laughs> yeah, that was special. Yeah, I was, I was just going to add to the... Uh, the scene you painted of us going, now we're just reminiscing, so we can always get back to film finance, but um, the, the scene of, of, of us going on the red carpet, um, in Cannes, it's like, it's hard to describe. It's like, there'll be 2,000 people there aligning the sides of the, the red carpet, but number one, they're all in tuxedos and like the most fabulous gowns you've ever seen. And then at least 500 of them are photographers. So you've got, and it's a red carpet, very elegant scene. You know, this uh, uh, group of, of us standing on the side and she's walking up. And you know, it's, a, it's just very, uh, 
it was very funny to me to see all these people dressed up in, you know, penguin suits and nightgowns and high heels and everything. And then, you know, NWA starts blasting. And then she, <laughs> she walks up the red carpet. I thought that was hilarious. That's a good one. <laughs> what a visual. Right. Exactly. And yeah, by the way, uh, a few words about Can We I I I, I realized that neither John nor Doval has has used the word the ugly word bankable. I mean that is something that's the only thing you hear in the market in Can because as you know Can is a festival and a market and and bankable is the